like what you will face and how to be late. If you got to put um, bring out that, people will just come near the church and everybody baptized. And they say, we are going, and they're done. But we have to, you don't have to be a preparing people to come and train in the army. All right. Yeah. You have to be a preparing people to come and train in the army. If you're going to army, you have to go down the entry and then give you the rules and everything and everything. To prepare you to go in the army. All right. So it says to be strong in the Lord. And hear what Brother Chris Bellas and is saying. So it is not str strong in your own strength, but allowing God to strengthen you. Right? Strong in the Lord. Isabel. Fasting and prayer. Okay. And beg God to give you strength to overcome the devil. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for that. Yeah. Um, was well, there another answer somewhere else? Yes, Brother Reed. Now, there are many people since I've baptized in this church. I see many people come and they go in the sense of they fall back. Now, I look at it in the sense of how much do we study the word of God and as much as how much do we believe before we even get baptized? Because the Bible speaks the word of God. And you can come here, we can sit and we pray, but yet still, you went to hell. Because there are things in the Bible that God don't want you to do, and you didn't see it. It's not that you deliberately know of it and do it. But you didn't know that it was in the Bible, God did not want you to do it. And you do it, but you're going to stand there for it. So to be strong, we have to study the word. Sing and pray. Ask God. Because there's a, there's a scripture that's in the Bible that says that man, we don't need man to teach us. He said the Holy Spirit, that's what it said. Nobody get me wrong. He said that the Holy Spirit will teach you. So dear and then, if you sing and pray and go down on your knee and ask God to help you, he will send the Holy Spirit to teach you that that's his word and not my word. All right, thank you. Now, I just want to refer to the introductory story based on your comment. We see, and we may be very well familiar with the story of Elisha and his servant as they were surrounded by the enemy's army. And the servant, having seen the army, he was breathless as he spoke to Elisha. What are we going to be doing in Second Kings? And uh, Elisha's, Elisha's response was, may I have dumbfounded the, the young man. He, in, in, Elisha was asking the young man to take it easy, because everything is going to be all right. And the young man was anxious. Oh, is it that you are so, so, and I'm paraphrasing, right? Oh, is it that you are so calm when things are going wrong? And put yourself in a situation when everything around you is going wrong. Oh, is it that some person can see you take it calm? Because you know the Lord is with you. Here's what Elisha said to the young man. And you can go for it in Elisha, in uh, 2 Kings 6. Elisha said, in fact, the those that are for us are more than those that are against us. And I say amen. So, first, brothers and sisters, you need to approach your trials with confidence in the God you serve. That serves the server, amen. Don't it? You must go forth knowing that God is with you. Elisha said, those who are with us are, those, are greater than those that are against us. And God said, and then Elisha prayed and said, Lord, open his eyes. Maybe, maybe we should ask God sometimes to open our eyes so that we can see our salvation. Praise the Lord. Maybe we need to ask God to reveal to us how he's working through us. But you know, sometimes we don't trust God enough. People, sometimes we don't trust God enough. So even when God brings out for salvation, we say, boy, we don't want to be saved away. Mercy. I want to be saved based on my interpretation of salvation. Right? Sister Grant. Other words, we must have a relationship.
relationship with God. We must know God for ourselves. And if we fall, we must realize that or recognize that we have an advocate, God the Father, that can bring us up and renew our relationship with him as if we did not fall. Right. Amen. Thank you very much. So here is what Paul is saying. Because Paul is saying, be, um, stand. We, and we should stand. Be strong in the Lord. Put on the old armor of God and be able to stand against the, the, the wiles of the devil. Right? So again, we still need to go further in this matter of standing. Can you, if you're, if you're not moving, you're standing on your feet, you know, but you're not moving forward, are you achieving the purpose? Listen to what I'm saying now, because we need to be strong with what we say when we say no. If we are standing, okay, we have come to church and we say we're baptized, and we come every pastor and we bring our Bible and our quarterly, and we say we come to church, yeah? But if we stay the same place where we were when we came in the church 25 years ago, are we achieving God's purpose? Brother Murphy is, is, is saying something. Let me hear what he's saying. All right. If you notice what, what is happening here, Paul is using so the uh, uh, arm is strategy. Yeah. And he said that you have to put on the, the armor. So if we if we were to think of the armor then, it is something made out of metal. You have to have uh, an helmet and some body armor. So it is rather heavy, but you are being equipped for the war. But one of these things that you must have is the helmet of salvation, which the Bible says in verse 17, is the word of God. Yeah, so, yeah, it is also the sword as well. So you can come a war and stand up steady. You have to come a war, and when you come a war, you have the sword in your hand, which is, of course, the word of God, which not must only be in our hand, but also in the head. Hence, it is said, of your head to go to bed. So you must be in that position on the battlefield to be able to defend God's word. So you must know God for yourself. You must know God's word. And you cannot do that unless you are studying his word. And then you will be in a position to be in a better place. And as I was saying earlier, it is sad if you are in the church for number of years and you are at the same place there must be spiritual growth all right quickly get further read and then i'm going to put oh, sister lounge wanted to say something and those are the comments i'm going to take and flash and wrap this thing up okay yes and, comments, um, comments. <laughs> what i'm saying is that the years that we have yes. no matter how many years it's a daily connection daily connection with God and we connect with him through his study of his word and the leading of the Holy Spirit. So you find that the word and the Holy Spirit are the armors of God. And then also we not only to keep it to ourselves but we have to tell it to others. You know, live it and share it with others. And um, we notice the, um, the, the lesson in some of the world is about Martin Luther. And when he was um, when he was charged by the church because he was in the church, the Catholic Church, and then he realized the Bible and he started to live by the Bible, he was accused, he was imprisoned, whatever. But he stands firm by the word of God. And we are going to those who are alive in these last days. The time will come when we'll have to stand firm. It's going to go against the Advent Church. So we have to know the word, live it from now. And we can't know it unless we study it. And ask the Holy Spirit to be, to take us through. All right, thank you very much. Um, we're going to go into other comments. But I want to leave uh, three statements that were made in the, in the quarterly. One, when you go, when you stand, you must get close to your enemy. You need to face the enemy. On the back of you, you have to face your enemy, right? You can't run away from your enemy and say you're standing. Two, then you need to um, ensure that you're standing your ground. Be ready to fight. If it's an hand-to-hand combat, you must be positioned and ready to fight. If you're not positioned,
exercising. And so you can understand that for me to be strong, for us to be tough, we have to exercise our faith in God. Because it's not just to read the Bible, because I can't study the Bible, but I don't comply with it. But when I read the Bible and I am be obedient to the Holy Spirit, then I know I can be strong. I also agree with the sister mentioned earlier on that uh, one of the methods that can help us to be strong is through the method of fasting and prayer. Because Jesus said when, when, um, when they, they could not like, drive out the demons of the first time, they said, what, 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 what could this happen? Jesus said, this kind of not out, but by fasting and prayer. So, in short, we must exercise our faith in the Lord and that will help us to be strong. Conclusion, this brother read his Bible each morning. And he said, what saved him on this day? His two friends said to him, look, if the guy would miss us, let us go there and do this case. But he takes him with the money and says, if sin has entice you, consent down that. You know what happened that morning? His two friends went and murdered the man. And they were charged and sentenced for each of them for, 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 for life in prison. And if they did not be finished the word of God, it would have been the same problem today. So, study the word of God. Comply with and that it helps us to grow spiritually. Thank you. Affirming our ability to stand is Paul's word in our focus text. Ephesians 6, verse 10 to 20. In verse 14, it says, Stand then with your belt, with a belt of truth buckled around your waist. So you need truth. Your breastplate of righteousness. He said, if you don't have on righteousness, then uh, you have a problem, right? It continues. With your feet fitted with the readiness to come from that readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. So, in other words, you must be fortified with the gospel, ready to use the gospel as a weapon. Jesus said, I'm a Use the word of God when he was tempted. He says, then you should also have the shield of faith. Because although you have the breastplate and you have the feet in the gospel of truth, it doesn't mean that the enemy will not attack you. So you must stand up on something. He says, you need a shield of faith, which will be able to extinguish the arrows that, 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 of the evil one. But then we are, I heard you said earlier that you need a breastplate of righteousness. I did say that. Sorry. You need the element, sorry, of salvation. The element of salvation, the sword of the spirit, which he says is the word of God. But hold on a sec. We're not finished with the armor yet. The armor that went on and said, and pray in the spirit. You know, sometimes we need a prayer. So then I find it said it. And you pray. We need to understand why do we pray? We need to understand that prayer is our surrendering ourselves to God, humbling ourselves before God and saying, Lord, I can't manage it, but you need to do it. Give me the charge to do it, and God will do it on our behalf. So it says, with prayer in the spirit, and with all prayer, make your request known. We should, we should pray always. And whenever we speak the word, give to, it says, pray also for me, that when, 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 whenever I speak, the Paul is saying, pray for me too. The word, the word may be given to me so that I will fearlessly make known the mystery of God. For I am an ambassador in chains. Brothers and sisters, we need to understand that God has called us to stand. Not to run away. But when we stand before God, we just can't stand in our own flesh. We need to be properly fortified, the Bible says. Truth, righteousness, Faith, the word of God must be in us and on us so that we'll be able to stand when the, ever, when the, 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 the evil one comes. And don't forget that in all situations, don't leave home without this word, without prayer. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man my brother, I have something hot on his lips. Well, yes, um, from the meditation on stand, stand, stand. Um, there's a scripture that says, Go in grace and in the 
Charlie Jackie too. So we can pray and we can try that thing, but if we are not that thing, that, that grace and then knowledge that is true. We can't stand because it's the truth that like the thy word is a lamp and a light and it is also a guide, it is light. So in the world is that uh, and then I'm there, the next thing is we are listening a song, standing on the promises. Yeah, and there's another song, faith is the victory. So if there's no faith based on the understanding, the, the understanding of the word, or we all faith that we based on the word, you know. Amen, brothers and sisters. A big thank you to Elder Tucker for the way in which he has carried us throughout the lesson. Brothers and sisters, let us continue to stand for Jesus. While Satan is constantly seeking to blind their minds to the fact, let Christians never forget that they wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against wicked spirits in high places. The inspired warning is sounding down the centuries to our time. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. Put on the whole arm of God, that he may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. To close our school, we stand and sing in 618, Stand Up, Stand Up for Jesus.
most righteous, loving, eternal Father, word in heaven. Lord, we pause just to give you thanks and praise for all that you have done for us. Thank you for being with us throughout our school. And as we close, dear God, I pray that you will continue to be with us, continue to just lead and direct in our lives. Help that as we go day by day, help us to always stand for you, dear God. Thank you for everything that you have done and what you will continue to do for us. Please to be with the rest of the day's proceedings, dear Father. In Jesus' mighty name I pray. Amen. You may be seated. It's now blessed from Sabbath School. See you next week, same time, same place. happy in the Lord? You're happy and you know that I'm here to say praise the Lord. All right. So I'm here this morning because health is everything. Do you agree? If you were not healthy, you would not have been here today. But you know, sometimes health is far more than the physical. Do you agree? So if we are not mentally and emotionally healthy, we are very ill just the same. And I want to talk to us briefly about one of the things that is, you would have heard in the news, and it's about the dengue. Anybody hearing about it? Yes. And the ministry is saying that though there is a 13% increase, it's not, there, it's not an outbreak. They don't believe it's an outbreak. It is, it is localized between Kingston and St. Andrew, St. Thomas, Westmoreland, and St. Catherine. And we are in St. Catherine. So as a church, we need to start put some things in place. All right. So how is this um, condition contracted? Anybody knows? What's the name of the mosquito? It is a zip tie. All right. So what are some of the air, some of the things that we should do to prevent this? We can do it. We can stay off this. And um, from what I'm understanding, a number of the children are coming up with this type 2 dengue. Um, what are some of the things as a church, as a community, as families we need to do? All right, so please project the voices that we all can benefit. Eliminate the breeding sites. That's one of the best things. So what are the breeding sites? Stagnant water. So... When we have those um, chiffon containers, those cans that are that rise and those little puddles around the place, we need to get rid of them. How can we possibly do that? I'm hearing a chorus, actually. What is it? Yes, it's the reed. What are you saying? All right. So one of the things we can do is to pour the tins, and we should put away those garbage. We should bag them up and get rid of them. All right. Another thing we can do is what? So what if you cannot control the water in the area? What can you do? A little curtain oil, a little bleach, and stuff like that to kill it. And also, you know that even in your drainers, even in the kitchen where the water drains from the dishes, we need to also eradicate that. Because if you look carefully, you can see those little lava, they are moving up there. So we can actually breathe it right there in the kitchen. Yes, Sister Grant? Ah, that's a very important one. The, the, the flower pots that we have with the saucers, and that has the water. Yes, we have to water the plants, but what can we do? What can we do with the saucers? We empty them, try and um, empty them as frequently as possible. 
children are exposed. Yes, Brother Reed. Wonderful. Yes, sister. Those who have what? Pets. 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 Right. Good. So what we are getting here is once the water is stagnant, once it's there, it's a breeding site. And we can, you know, prevent that. We can also um, close our doors early in the evening because, you know, they tend to come in before it's dark. In the evening, we can try and do that. Now, what are some of the symptoms? What are some of the symptoms that we must look for when a person, when you realize that somebody is getting ill? Anybody? I hear in a course, you know. What are some of the things? We all know them. Hmm? Fever. Fever. And uh, there are times that the fever is very high. And in the children, remember, they cannot manage. Older folks and children cannot manage an elevated temperature. It will affect the brain and they will end up with seizures. All right? So they don't want that. So yes, fever. But there are times that the fever is stemmed. We get rid of the fever, but they're still having major symptoms. What else? Vomiting. Vomiting and diarrhea. And then there comes a time when you have what is called hemorrhagic dengue. So there comes a time you might be passing stool with blood or vomiting till you see blood. We don't want to go there. What else should we, would we be looking for? Rashes. What about the joint pains? Yes. So we want to make sure that if anybody in the family, anybody, your neighbor, whoever, have any of these symptoms, don't give them the, the, the um, Advil and all those things. Those things are not the best things for them. Best, if you are giving them anything, give, because guess what? There's no particular treatment for dengue. You're just treating the symptoms. But you try not to give them those things like Advil and so. If you're giving them anything, let it be like mild panadol, cetamol then, because that is mild on the stomach. So we can do that. We increase the fluid intake. If you realize that this is persisting, we need to see the doctor. All right? Usually when a person becomes infected, four days, about four days before they start manifesting the symptoms, they might feel tired, have no energy, and then, bam, by the fifth day, they are fully blown. All right? The symptoms tend to last up to about seven days. All right? But let's, as a church, as a family, let us try to prevent. We don't want anybody in our congregation, anybody in our family, to be infected with dengue. And whatever you can do to minimize that, let us try and do it by keeping our environment clean, get rid of the garbage, get rid of, if, if we can't get rid of the pool of water, we can put, you know, protein oil or bleach or whatever we can put in the water to prevent the growth of these um, mosquitoes. All right, so until then, keep healthy, but most of all, have a clear mind, think positive. The Bible says, Whatever, um, whatever we do, we must be able, if it is something that is positive, something that is of good report, something that will bring honor to God, we should think on those things. God bless you.
number 15, my maker and my king.
What a day that will be. Let's praise the Lord. Number 434, we speak of the realms of the blessed, the country so bright and so fair. Number 434, 434. Four, four. We speak of the realms of the blessed. Thank you. 
without and within, God, what must it be to me then? We seem all preserved so grand, the earth will ever glorify thee, ever after thee. God, what must it be to me then? Further we are enshrouded by the angels of God before which to stand. One Savior, crucified, risen, ascended to heaven, and coming again, with life and liberty to give to all who believe.
the old English song that we use, three, one, three. The opening song is three one one. Please stand. Affirmation of faith is Exodus 20, verse 1 to 17. We will read together. And God spake all these words, saying, I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image, or any likeness of any thing which is in the heaven above, or that is in the earth beneath. And again, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children, unto the third and fourth generations of them that hate me. And to the mercy of all the of them that love me and keep my commandments. So, the name of the Lord that God is saying, for the Lord will not bring thee greatness that taketh thee into shame. Remember the God of David, he is holy. Seek first God, the Jacob, and do all thy works. But the God of David, the God of the Lord, 
Happy Sabbath, brothers and sisters. Happy Sabbath to those who are worshiping online. I am really happy to be here this morning. I am happy to be the person to welcome you this morning. So I just want you to do this exercise. I want you to touch yourselves. Feel yourself. Just touch your hands like this. Touch your face like this. Let me see you doing that. You can touch. Touch the person who is sitting next to you. Just reach out and touch the person. You know what that is saying, brothers and sisters? You are alive. You are alive. And that's much to give God thanks for. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. Angels bow before him. Heaven and earth adore him. What a mighty God we serve. Come on, put your hands together. Come on. What a mighty God we serve. Heaven and earth adore him. What a mighty God be. One more time. Come on. Put your hands and praise the Lord, man. Come on. We serve. What a mighty God we serve. Angels bow before him. Heaven and earth adore him. What a mighty God we serve. We serve a God who is indeed a good God. Now I just want you to know that the Holy Spirit is in this place today. I want that as you worship, it's my prayer, that you will feel the presence of the Holy Spirit as you worship. Whether you are here for the first time, whether you are here all the time, whether you're here sometimes, whether you are simply just being online, I want you to understand that I am praying that the blessings of the Lord will be upon you today, and it will be upon you in an abundant way. I also pray that as you worship today, and you get the blessings of the Lord when you leave here, his presence will permeate in your household and in the very community so others around you can know that we still serve a God who is alive. Now I want you to help me. One last thing for you to help me to do. Say something encouraging. A scripture, a favorite line of a song, something encouraging to the person who is sitting next to you this morning. Please feel welcome, one and all. Happy Sabbath, church. Please listen to the following announcements for Sabbath, September 8th, 2023. The Family Life Department of Central Jamaica Conference presents Couples Full Circle, a mutual devotion attaining the love zenith, an evening of education, motivation, and celebration on the 17th of September. The venue will be Cayman, Caymanas Golf Club. Please see Brother O'Bazfield for further details. Church choir practice at 2.30 this afternoon. Children's choir practice this afternoon at 3.30 p.m. The AY program for September 23 is entitled A Bible We Say. 
you are being asked to come out and be a part of this program. No phone will be allowed, only the Bible. Want to know more? Join us. Please remember our Sunday evening evangelistic meetings and Wednesday evening prayer meeting starting at 7 p.m. Fasting and prayer every second Wednesday of every month. The next session will be Wednesday, October 11th, starting at 9 a.m. Let's pray, worship, and fellowship together. The Communications Department would like to say happy birthday and happy anniversary to all who celebrated this week. Thought for the day, God does not give us everything we want, but he does fulfill his promises, leading us along the best and straightest path to himself. All right, there are a few membership transfer that I would like to read as to this. One, two. All right. The first one is from Rosal, the Seventh Day Adventist Church in Rosal, St. Catherine, Jamaica, to the Palm District Treadway Peace Seventh Day Adventist Church in Linstead, St. Catherine. Greetings. Whereas Taji Davis is desirous of uniting with your body. This is to certify that the said Taji Davis is a member of this church in good and regular standing and that we cordially recommend him to your fellowship and care. And when he shall have been received by you and notice of that fact given to us by the return of the accompanying certificate with the blanks filled, Taji Davis will no longer be considered a member of this church. Also, request for transfer of church membership from Sister Natalia Duncan. Greetings. We have received a request from Sister Natalia Duncan, who now owes membership in your church, Palm Seventh-day Adventist Church, to unite with our congregation, Agley Park Seventh-day Adventist Church. As soon as your church processes this request, and the transfer is duly authorized, please send a certificate. And the, finally, we are from Brother Oswell Mike Joseph and Sister Eunice Josie Joseph. To the clerk, church clerk of the Seventh-day Adventist Church at Palm, Seven day, Lindsay St. Catherine, we have received a request from Oswald and Eunice Joseph, who now owes membership at the church and resided at Lindsay St. Catherine, Jamaica, to unite with the church at Leeds Central Seventh, Seventh day Adventist Church, Leeds West Yorkshire, United Kingdom. As soon as your church has given this request, your consideration and the transfer has been authorized, kindly send the letter of transfer to the church clerk whose name and address are below. All right, so those are the membership transfer from the different churches. At this time, we'll be blessed by a song by the children's choir.
and he answered me and saved me from my enemies. Those who look on him are ready on. They'll never be ashamed. They'll never be ashamed. This poor man cried. And the Lord heard me and saved me from my enemies. The Son of God surrounds his tent. He will deliver them. He will deliver them. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Oh, blessed is he who hides in him. Oh, fear the Lord. Oh, all you saints, he'll give you everything. He'll give you everything. Bless the Lord every day and night, never ending praise. May our incense rise. Bless the Lord every day. Bless the Lord. 
Good morning, church. Worship in a shipping container. 12-year-old Bamlak lives in Adias Ababa, Ethiopia. She loves to tell Bible stories using her colorful felt pictures. She teaches the children's Sabbath school class, which meets in a shipping container that stands beside the church. On any given day of the week, children invite their friends to gather in the classroom to sing and play games like Bible trivia. They organize their own programs for the week's meetings. Teodra lives near this church, and he could hear the singing from his church, his house. When he was still quite young, he wandered down the street to check out the music. He loved it. Soon, Teodra and his siblings were at the church every Sabbath. Their parents noticed that the children had changed and they were curious about where they spent so much time. The children begged their parents to come to church with them. When they finally did, they were impressed by what they saw. This was the right church for their family. Fifteen years later, and they are still grateful to their children for introducing them to the Adventist church. Bamlak and the other children are praying for more space in their Sabbath school container so they can invite more friends to come to worship. When church leaders understand the importance of ministering to children, they strive to provide a simple room or even a shipping container outside the church building that will serve as the children's division. These lamb shelters protect the children from the sun, the hot sun, rainstorms, and distractions. Children often lead their parents to Jesus and thus build the church from the children up. We know that the tithe and regular offerings are God's part, expected to be returned to him from our earnings. Even though the tithe represents a, por a proportion of our income that is determined by God, offerings are, our, are ours to decide what percentage to give him. Rather than dropping a coin or a paper bill into the offering basket to support the church, prayerfully ask God what percentage of your income he would have given regularly, every week or month, when you receive your paycheck. Ask him to bless you in return and see how he will supply all your needs, all your needs according to his riches in Christ Jesus. Let us pray. Dear God, thank you for this day. Thank you for allowing us all to wake up in our right minds. Lord, may this offering and tithe be helpful to the building of the church. In your name I pray. Amen. The deacons will now collect tithes and offerings.
The scripture reading comes to us from the book of St. John, chapter 6, verse 9. St. John 6, verse 9. And it reads, there's a lad here which have five barley loaves and two small fishes, but what are they among so many? This is the word of the Lord. Let us in the midst of our prayer. kind, loving, and compassionate Father. As we come before you this morning again, Lord. Father, as we recognize, Lord, this morning, this is a special morning all around this world as we would pass by the day. Father, as we come this morning, we ask the Lord to forgive us for our many sins. Father, Lord, we ask you, Lord, for everything that we have on you. Father, Lord, we ask you, Lord, to continue to guide each and every one of us. Father, as we come this morning, we put our speaker before you. Lord, you realize, Lord, it's not the first that we occupy this program. But, Father, Lord, we ask you, Lord, to continue to guide him. We ask you, Lord, to mold him as we are about to Take this pulpit, Father. We ask the Lord to breathe a word of prayer for him at this time. Father, we ask the Lord to forgive us for our many sin. And Father, whatever thing that we do, may we done in thy name and in glory. For Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Good morning, everyone. As you are all observing, that we are excited about Pathfinders Day today. We are operating under the theme, Go With Jesus. And it's exciting to have the Pathfinders uniformed again. And uh, we hope to continue leading our young people to establish a relationship with God. Amen? There's one thing that I'd like to introduce the church to. That all youth leaders are required to know and to, uh, to, to recite. It's not one of those normal emblems that we do. But this one is called uh, the Legion of Honor. I'm going to ask Zachary to come and uh, to take us through the Legion of Honor. of 
honor, and then I'm going to be inviting you to stand with me as we make this particular commitment. Um, uh, yes, all of us will make this particular commitment. Honor Christ in that which I choose to behold. Honor Christ in that which I choose to listen. Honor Christ in the choice of places which I, which I go. Honor Christ in the choice of associate. Honor Christ in that which I choose to speak. Honor Christ is the care I give my body temple. All right, thank you. So, um, uh, so I'm going to be inviting you to stand. I'm going to take you through line by line. And if you are so designed, you will join with me um, in reciting this Legion of Honor voluntarily. If you are so designed, I'm going to invite you to stand as we part participate in reciting the Legion of Honor. And it says, and say after me, I volunteer now to join the AY Legion of Honor. And by the grace and the power of God, I will honor Christ in that which I choose to behold. Honor Christ in that which I choose to listen. Honor Christ in the choices of places I wish to go. Honor Christ in the choice of associates. Honor Christ in that which I choose to speak. Honor Christ in the care I give my body temple. Amen. Now I'm hoping that our youth department will adopt these, this AY Legion of Honor and then we will learn it from day to day, all right? Thank you very much. As we planned for our Pathfinders Day, one of the need was to decide on a speaker. As the Pathfinder director, if you don't have a speaker, then it almost always falls on you. But as would have it, as they invitation went out, we had a volunteer. Um, I must say that I'm extremely proud of this young man who has volunteered to be our speaker today. He has grown up as a member of this church from a child and uh, has uh, demonstrated in significant ways his willingness to be a servant of God. In fact, that is um, the man, one of the mantra of the, the, the Pathfinders Club, to be a servant of God and a friend to man. I believe he has exemplified in all these spaces. If there's someone that you need to do anything, you can be assured that you don't need to ask a second time. In fact, he will volunteer as he did today. Um, I believe you will agree with me that God has been leading our speaker today. He has been guiding him, and I believe that there is much that God has in store for him. And I so ask your prayers on our speaker. And our speaker is our young brother, Carson Brown. You all know him, right? Yes, yeah, so Carson is going to be our speaker today. I know his mother and father are going to be very proud of him. I must tell you that I did not, uh, I gave him the presentation, I didn't look at it again, I didn't ask him a question, but he says everything is good. But we pray that God will lead him today as he use him to be his mouthpiece. Before Carson comes uh, to speak on behalf of the Lord, the children's choir will prepare our hearts for a special blessing. May God bless you.
I'm holding on to Jesus and holding on to him every day. Happy Sabbath, everyone. Are you happy to be in the house of the Lord today? If you're happy and you know it, say amen. If you're happy and you know it, say praise the Lord. If you're happy and you know it, say thank you, Jesus. And if you're happy and you know it, shout the highest praise. Indeed, he is worthy to be praised. I remember the last time I stand in this position. 
which was sincere, but the Lord knows why I volunteered to come into this position again. The topic for my sermon today is Go with Jesus. Before I go any further, let us pray. If you need anything, Lord, you can use me. Hide me behind the cross. Let me not be seen nor heard, but you are high and lifted up in all the earth. In your son's holy name I pray. Amen. As a pathfinder, one of the most critical daily action is knowing who to ask permission from. This action denotes respect on the part of the one who asks and trusts and the part of the one who grants it so on. So we have consideration, consent, submission, and authority. Past fighters, I don't know if the same, same thing happens to you as it happens to me that Every time I ask my parents' permission, they ask me a couple of questions. For example, if I am going to play online game, who will you be playing with? Where are they from? How long will you be sitting around the computer or phone? There is no doubt that some of my parents' biggest concerns are who I hang out with who my friends are, what activities I do with them, and the kind of influence they can have on me. On more than one occasion, they had said things to me such as, be careful with you you get together with. We see faces, but we do not know the heart. Tell me who you hang out with, and I'll let you know who you are. Always climb a good tree. One thing is certain, every time my Pathfinder director asks my parents permission to, particip to participate in a club activity, they almost let me go. And here's the reason why. They knew, they know rather, my Pathfinder counselor because they know I have good friends in my unit because they know the people who run the club. In the Bible, there is a story that makes us think that the pro-antagonist must have asked permission. A story where, where trust and respect, consideration, consent, and submission and authority. Let me tell you the story. The story of the miracle of the multiplication of the loaves and fishes. This is the story of the multiplication of loaves and fishes. Although truly it's about a child pro-antagonist of this miracle, a child that is barely mentioned. But the miracle is important so that it is found in all four Gospels. What are the four Gospels? They are Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. But John tells us who the pro-antagonist is. Now pay attention. Perhaps the miracle would have been different if it were not for him. Do you know what, do you know who we are talking about? Can you imagine who I'm referring to? I invite you to open your Bibles with me to John chapter 6, verse 1 to 15. But I, I want to focus on verse 9. John chapter 6, verse 9. It says, there is a lad here with, which have five barley loaves and two small fishes, but what are they among so many? I think that the boy was at age of one of us pathfinders. Perhaps in Jesus' time, back in the land of Judea or in the case near Bethsaida, there had been a pathfinder club. He would have worn a yellow scarf just like you and I are wearing today. It's not written, but we can imagine that the mere fact of knowing Jesus was, in the, was, in the, 
this vicinity made his wife feel the desire to go and be with him. The story suggests that Jesus was troubled. He wanted to be alone. John the Baptist has recently died. So he crossed the sea and went up on a mountain with his disciples. But when the people heard about Jesus and how he healed the sick, he raised the dead, he healed the lepers, he caused blind eyes to see, they began to follow him. Mark chapter 6, verse 55 and 56 from the New International Version said that they ran throughout the whole region, carried the sick on mats to wherever they heard he was, and wherever he went into villages, towns, or countryside. They placed the sick in marketplaces. They begged him to let them touch even the edge of his cloak, and all who touched it were healed. Undoubtedly, the fame of Jesus, the way he showed compassion for people, awakened this boy's interest, knowing that Jesus had the power to heal the sick, made the boy want to be where Jesus would be. He wanted to see him, hear him, and of course, in the persona of Jesus, appealed in a special way to this new generation, they would want to be with Jesus. Just as in Jesus' time, there are many people who need to be healed. There are many people who need to be touched by Jesus. There are many people who need to hear his words, who need to come to him and believe in him. Our friend not only knew that there was a man called Jesus around, but also he was interested in going where Jesus was. When we participate in Bible classes, we are taught not only of the story of the one who gave his life a ransom for many, but also the Holy Spirit and how it encourages and motivates us to fulfill expect our expectation and say, I am coming to you, Jesus. Number two, good fame generates confidence. Although our character was a boy who, like you and me, he did not govern himself. While he wanted to go where the Nazarene was, he needed to ask permission. And asking permission meant he had to be willing to, willingly to answer several questions. Do you remember the questions our parents ask when we ask permission for something? Well, probably more than a few of them were asked of him as well. Today, as in the past, our parents or guardian tend to worry every time they must give us permission to go somewhere. In Jesus' time, as in the present, there are dangerous places and people all around. Although we say we know and we are able to take care of ourselves, the Bible tells us in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 12, so if you think you are standing firm, be careful so that you don't fall. Or in other words, in certainty lies danger. Many times parents don't to give us permission to go out simply because they don't know where we are going. They don't know whom we are going, nor, whom, nor what time we will return. However, for many people, a pathfinder club is a good place. The club has persisted. Our leaders have earned respect and trust of our parents. They give us permission to go camping. They give us permission to do activities in the mountains, in the lakes and the rivers. They give us permission to travel, to travel and participate in campery. Why? Simply because of the persistence the club has. Because of the fame the past finder have. That and that generates confidence. For the same reason, many people want to place their children in the club because the club program generates confidence in them. 
because they know that in the Pathfinder Club, their children will be safe and have good friends. Jesus fame generated confidence in people. Thousands of people crowded around him. People who had heard about Jesus. You and I are privileged to be members of the Daniel Pathfinder Club. This club has a good reputation. Every time we wear our uniform, we are given a testimony, not of what it means to be a pathfinder. We are, we are testifying of Jesus, and that generates confidence. That's why we should invite our classmates, our friends, and our neighbors to come and join the club. There are many kids around us who want to participate in the same activity as you do. I dare to affirm that the mother of this boy in this story was aware of Jesus' fame. And like her neighbors, this gave her confidence, security, and a peace of mind to let him go. Number three, knowledge leans, lends to consent. Imagine the scene in your heart. A desire was awakened to go where Jesus was. Many people like you are going. Even friends of yours are going along with their parents. However, unlike your friends, you know your mother cannot accompany you. You know your father cannot accompany you. So you must ask them permission. The good fame of Jesus has generated great expectation. You want to be there. You are interested in being there but you need to ask permission. Some time ago in April, for me to participate in a Pathfinder campaign, my Pathfinder director had to ask permission. I, we were still in classes and even worse, exam week was coming up. I wanted to go to the campaign. I knew I'll have a good time there. I knew that everyone in, well, majority of my friends in the past Vanda class would go, but I needed my parents to sign the permission slip. In the Sermon on the Mount, we were told that Jesus invited all kinds of people to come to him. He invited the poor, the sick, the lame, and the rich to come to him. The scene of the miracle of the multiplication does not have an explicit invitation on the part that of Jesus, that the mere fact that he was there, that there was already an invitation to follow him. I can imagine then that the boy went to his mother to ask her permission and that she did not need to hear the arguments of her son because she knew and knew the fame of Jesus. She had full confidence that to be where Jesus was, was a safe place to be. She was assured to the point of telling her son, go with Jesus, go to him, for there you will be safe. Go and stay as long as it takes. Go to Jesus because in him I have full confidence. Because in him I put my full trust. Because in him I have faith. When my counselor talked to my parents and told them what we, where we will go, what we will do, my parents said, go, my son. Go with your counselor. Have a good time. Go make the most of your time there. Have fun with your class. John 6 verse 9 tells us that the boy brought to Jesus refreshment that we may assume his mother had prepared for him. However, the story also tells us of all the people in the crowd. Only this boy had something to eat, and something to eat is what brought him into the presence of Jesus. Can you imagine it? Being brought to Jesus. The mother consented to let the boy go because she knew or had heard about Jesus. The boy was willingly to give what he had to eat because he spends hours and hours listening to Jesus, getting to know Jesus. 
although the Bible briefly mentioned the boy and his respective action as a soldier for Christ, the story opens our hearts and our mind with the imagination and that at the same time help us to understand that knowing Jesus allows us to generate trust and desire to follow him. It allows us to understand the persona of Jesus at the, the task of Jesus entrusted to his people. Come to meet the need of his people. That no matter how old we are, no matter how much we have to offer, by being with Jesus, we become his instrument. That by going with Jesus, we become channels of blessing for our families, our companions, neighbors, and our friends. Incredible that a few loaves of bread and few fishes that the boy brought and gave to Jesus served as a blessing for a great multitude. Paul asked, how then can they call on the one in whom they have not believed in? And how can they believe in the one in whom they have not heard of? And how can they hear without someone preaching to them? To be with Jesus, to respond to his invitation, encourages us to fulfill his will. Neither the mother in giving permission and saying, go with Jesus, nor the boy in answering, I will go with Jesus, could have imagined what will happen later. A multitude that was delighted by his action and the word of Jesus was fed as well as another multitude that was also benefited by receiving what was left over from the miracle. Today, the Pathfinder Club is celebrating 72 years since its official organization. As a club, you are a part of it because your parents one day told you to go. Today, you are a Pathfinder, proudly wearing your yellow scarf, because you said go. I want to tell you that the greatest invitation that Jesus makes to you and I not only may mean that we have to be enrolled in the club or have our name written down in the achievement class workbook or that we are participating in an upcoming camporee. The greater purpose that Jesus has for you and I today is for you and I to surrender our lives to him in baptism. Testify to all that you belong to him. I will accept him as my personal Lord and Savior. Do my gifts and talents, do whatever I have in my hands. I am willing to say I will and tell all those around me of the wonders that he has done in my life or in your life. Are you willing to go with him? Do you want to say I am and go down into the waters of baptism? If all year round you have been at the feet of Jesus, listening to his word in Bible class, what can prevent you from saying I will go with Jesus? You already know him and surely you are ready to go. Do you want to give your life to Jesus and have your name written down in the book of life? If you say yes, then I say yes with you. Go with Jesus. Have a happy Sabbath. Let me say thanks to Brother Brown for ably presenting the word of the Lord. Amen? Amen. The closing song is 319. Please stand.
to be a Christian in my heart. Lord, I want to be a Christian in my heart. In my heart, in my heart. Lord, I want to be a Christian in my heart. Lord, I want to be more loving in my heart. Lord, I want to be more loving in my heart. In my heart. In my heart. To be more loving in my Lord, I want to be more holy in my heart. Lord, I want to be more holy in my heart. In my heart, in my heart, Lord, I want to be more holy in my heart, in my heart. Lord, I want to be like Jesus in my heart. Lord, I want to be like Jesus in my heart. In my heart, in my heart. To be more Jesus in my heart. Please, please bow your heads. Heavenly Father, thank you for blessing us today. Please be with us as we separate for our lunch. In Jesus' mighty name, amen.